when you open your polariscope, you're going to find it's a very simple but important tool in your gemologist toolbox. You've got your basic polariscope here, which is two filters, the polarizer and the analyzer. You've got an on-off switch there, power cord, and a conoscope. It's a, it's a very simple setup and a very simple tool. But put in the right hands of an experienced gemologist, it can become a very important gem identification piece of equipment. So I want to start with this for this particular polariscope. When you start using your polariscope, make sure that you have your filters to the dark position. You want to rotate that top filter, the analyzer, to where you're totally in the dark position. You can see here as you rotate it back and forth. Of course, that plays tricks with my camera. But you can see how it goes from a light to the dark position. And you want to be sure you've got it as the darkest position possible because that's where you're getting the, the best plain polarized light. There's always dust particles. Don't worry about those little white specks. They're going to always be there. You're going to always see them. As we rotate this particular amethyst, you can see it goes from light to dark. You're going to see it far better as the flash from dark to light as you rotate it there in person because the camera tries to adjust for the lighting. But this gives you an idea. You, for every 45 degrees we turn this, it goes from light to dark. And that means we have a double refractive gemstone. And that's a big important piece of information. Now we're going to look at a little blue stone. And you're going to notice as it turns, it stays dark. No matter how I turn this around, it stays dark. It doesn't go from light to dark. That tells us we have a single refractive gemstone. And these two pieces of information are very important. But there's more that we can get out of this polariscope. Let's take a look at the conoscope. To demonstrate the conoscope, I want to use this big lab-grown citrine because it has such a great demonstration of a bullseye. You see the rainbow figures here. That's when you know you're right on the interference figure. And with your conoscope, you can see the bullseye interference figure of quartz. And I want to stop this for just a minute so you can see this and know that when you've got this bullseye, you have quartz. Now be careful because not all quartz will have a bullseye. Sometimes these isogears, what they call them, they'll come to a, a point in the middle and they'll just be a uniaxial interference figure. And uniaxial gemstones will have this look, just not that circular bullseye in the middle. So be careful about that because not all quartz will have a bullseye. But if you have a bullseye, you guaranteed to have quartz. But this is what the conoscope does for us as far as being able to identify whether we have a stone that's uniaxial, biaxial, and or we have a bullseye interference for quartz. And this is going to be something fun when you see this for the first time with your polariscope and your gemstones. The importance of this test is just this fact. If you know you have a uniaxial gemstone, you know it cannot be anything that's cubic, and you know it cannot be anything that's biaxial. So what you're able to do is eliminate those. And that's the key to Gemini identification is eliminating. And when you see this figure, such as if you have a bullseye, you eliminate everything. But if you have a uniaxial gemstone, you know that the stones that form as biaxial, it cannot be those. So this is a very important test to use for your gem identification based on eliminating what it cannot be.